a wild 24 hours for Wisconsin Badgers fans. The women's hockey team clinches a spot in the national title game. The basketball team did some things. Also got some bad news on the recruiting trail while they were at it. Basketball team in, in a little bit of rough shape. And we're, we're going to cover that all, all on this show, of, of course. But let's let's talk a little bit of women's hockey as well. We're joined by a great friend to do it as the Badgers are in pursuit of their eighth national title and got a shocking, truly shocking news announcement sending waves through the hockey world right now. We got to break it down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good afternoon, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Look, I have a, a piece on the hard questions that Wisconsin basketball needs to answer very soon up on Badger Notes right now that is linked in the podcast description. But I want to start by talking about the Wisconsin women's hockey team. And as always, we are joined by the intermission voice of the Wisconsin Badgers, Noah Clark of iHeartRadio and 1070 The Game, hoisting the national championship banner from 2023. I have the ah! 2021 banner right here as well. Uh, will there be a 2024 banner to hang soon? Noah? Thanks, thanks for jumping on as we break down Wisconsin's thrilling Frozen Four win over the Colgate Red Raiders. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What an exciting game last night. Wisconsin winning against Colgate. Now they're playing for another national championship, and hopefully they get their eighth. I'm very excited. I'm also very frustrated about the turn of events that just happened this morning. And then also to Nadine Moserall with her comments on the national championship game. Lots, lots of stuff, lots of stuff before tomorrow, Kedrick. I cannot wait to jump into this conversation. I, I have not listened to any of the press conference stuff because I, I am recording with you, as I told you just minutes after getting back to my place in Milwaukee, I've been in Appleton yeah. the last couple of days. Uh, so really excited to find out what it is. Ohio state's head coach is saying uh, about her team's sixth matchup with Wisconsin this season to two programs building quite a bitter rivalry in, in the Midwest. But let's start with Wisconsin's win over Colgate. Uh, Wisconsin gets an early lead one, one, nothing over the red Raiders, just nine minutes uh, remaining in the first period as Kirsten Sims tallies her 33rd goal of the season uh, that is tied for the most in the country with Minnesota's Abby Murphy. Kirsten Sims opens the scoring. It holds for quite some time. Badgers not quite able to break through, uh, but neither could Colgate. And one of the most exciting things was a second period with a ton of special teams play, tons of penalties called in this game. Not that they were calling everything. I, certainly the game was called tighter than against St. Lawrence, which was a very physical game. The refs did not bring out the whistles as much as they could have in the regional final that Wisconsin won. But in this one, you know, so, some bumps, some good calls that I, I thought maybe it was called a little bit tight, but mostly I was fine with the penalty calls. The biggest of which was a delayed penalty that Wisconsin took a long time to gain possession on and have the whistle blown so long. In fact, like a full two minutes went by. And during that delay, Wisconsin took another penalty uh, and sent Colgate on a full two minute five on three power play, the third best power play in the entire country. And Wisconsin killed it off. Noah, how big was that two minute stretch in the second period for the Badgers to keep Colgate off the board and keep, keep that lead at one nothing? It was, it was massive. I mean, you talk about, I mean, there wasn't, I mean, it was exciting, just overall exciting. Mm -hmm. And Wisconsin, really did a phenomenal job in this game I, through the two periods when getting to that last period to try and put the dagger in. And that was kind of a turning point, or that was kind of a huge point in that game where Colgate has a chance to try and make this interesting and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I got to give credit this defense last night through three periods, almost to the last two minutes of that game stood out 
really well. Mm -hmm. And that was a key moment in that game. If, if Colgate scores off that, like that's huge for the red Raiders and their confidence for Wisconsin. If they don't get that, it's looking like a different story. Glad that the Badgers killed it. And yeah, I mean, a five on three power play able to kill that off was insane. And I was on the edge of my seat, Kedrick, at the studio, mm -hmm. just just hoping that they were able to kill it. And they did. And man, how about that defense? Really outstanding. There, There is. I am on record as saying Wisconsin's defense makes me question whether it is able to win the national title. There have been times that the, the defense up front in front of the goaltenders has not been good enough. Um, maybe some of that is Caroline Harvey playing at times undisciplined, Caroline Harvey being out of the lineup at times. You have a, a top defensive pairing in this game, which is two sophomores between Vivian Jungles and Caroline Harvey. It's a young defensive unit. Uh, you only have two upperclassmen in the six skaters overall, but it showed up in this game. 14 block shots in the first two periods, 21 block shots in like the first uh, 50 minutes of action with, an, with another three for 24 total on the game. A, a wildly impressive performance, including on that penalty kill in particular that the Badgers blocked two shot attempts. Um, Ava McNaughton stopped three shots on that power play and had two just like highlight real saves. She, she stood on her head at times in this game. And I don't even mean that from the sense that like she was making sprawling, miraculous saves. She stood on her head, like with composure, well positioned, always calm. Uh, Todd Molesky of Badger extra has a great piece out right now about a, a breakaway save that Ava McNaughton had in that game uh, over Colgate, just showing how steady, she she has been uh she she didn't give up a goal in this NCAA tournament until her 49th shot faced i cannot say enough about wisconsin's defensive performance in, in this game uh, against one of against the only offense in the country that has rivaled ohio states and wisconsin all year yeah and i mean it was you were i mean we both kind of were on record of this for saying how you know, Wisconsin's defense was a little bit iffy. They mm -hmm. came in and they really showed out. And Ava McNaughton, I mean, did she, you said like she only gave up, she's only given up one goal this whole, this whole tournament so far. One really? goal, one goal in this postseason on a total of 51 shots. That's, that's pretty impressive. And even more impressive is the fact that, you know, a lot of these shots too are really good quality shots that teams mm -hmm. are taking on her mm -hmm. and she's being able to shut, you know, these skaters down. And I've said this, said this countless times on this show, your defense, when they don't step up, your goalie needs to be that last line of defense to where you can step up and say, nobody is getting past me. And Ava has stood out in these last two games and it has been flat out incredible. And Again, Mark Johnson with a 10 out of 10 decision right now to go with Ava McNaughton, a freshman over Jane Gervais, and it's paid off mm -hmm. so well these last four games. She's been dominant in the last two tournament games as well. Let, let's talk about more Mark Johnson genius uh, and, and the goal that ultimately proved to be the game winner, the goal that put Wisconsin up 2-0. Uh, Colgate did get a goal with the goalie pulled made this one a little bit spicy late uh as colgate got uh cut, cut wisconsin's lead in half to 2-1 with uh over two minutes remaining but the goal that ended up proving to be the game winner we talked about you're you're going to need a sneaky goal scorer to steal you one uh you you gave me layla edwards i gave you marianne picard it ended up being vivian jungles for fifth of the season Proves to be the game winner, the sophomore defender on the top pairing. And one, putting her on the top pairing with Caroline Harvey, genius by Mark Johnson. Two, the only reason that goal happens is because Mark Johnson flipped Layla Edwards down from the wing and brought Britta Curl back up to the top line with Kirsten Sims and Casey O'Brien. And Britta Curl ends up giving Vivian Jungles screaming in on the left wing with a full head of steam. If you look back at this, at this clip, she is 
hauling it as fast as she can a left wing and just rips it far side uh, on a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot. You, you can't you can't draw it up any better than that on that cross ice pass from Britta Curl to the defender streaking in late. What what a shot by Vivian Jungles to give Wisconsin. Uh, the win and, and propel them to the national title game. Yeah. What a, what a, how about Vivian juggles? You know, let, let give credit to her. Like she's a, uh, she, I, I did not expect her to get a goal, but Mark Johnson, the, what you talked about Kedrick too, with the lineup that Mark Johnson went with. I said this last, I said this a few days ago on our last show, Mark Johnson, what is this lineup going to be? You know, it, are, are we going to see the same lineup that we had seen the last, you know, are we going to see the same lineup that we've seen, you know, the last couple games, or are we going to see a different lineup? He went with a different lineup and it pays off in the, in the frozen four once again. And Mark Johnson, a maestro when it comes to making these little changes, these little tweaks in the lineup and, using it to his advantage and this team i mean again like vivian juggle score a goal. I mean, that's that's insane <laughs> stuff like it's just really incredible what mark johnson has done but man that was a really huge goal for wisconsin and then layla edwards putting the dagger in on it as well to cap off a phenomenal night for this badger team and i mean it, it couldn't have come in a, an even bigger spot and vivian juggle she's going to relive that goal for the rest of her career here, uh, wearing the red W. We talked about it just after the WCHA final face off two weeks ago. Mark Johnson is pushing every right button right now for, for this Wisconsin team. It seems that every game, uh, he is making just, just the right adjustment. He's going to have to make a right adjustment. Once again, as Wisconsin takes on Ohio state in the national title game, Ohio state defeats Clarkson, 4-1 to advance to the national title game. This was a grinded out win for a while. Clarkson actually took the lead early. What was your impression of the Buckeyes as they defeat the Golden Knights to advance to Ohio State's third consecutive national title game? Man, there was a point at, at one point I was like, if Clarkson can just hold this lead, they may have a chance. But once Ohio State scored, I mean, it was pretty much over at that point. I mean, the mm -hmm. Buckeyes offense is just a juggernaut and especially towards the end of like those periods they got really gassed and they just could not keep up with the pay the play style that ohio state runs it, it, it really killed clarkson's momentum and then when maketa webster broke the the tie to go up to one i mean mm -hmm. that's really all you need to say there it's pretty much done you know set in stone but ohio state I think they really had a problem trying to get their offense set up. They had a really hard time generating anything into the zone. Like that Clarkson defense is just outstanding. They're outstanding. They are, mm -hmm. you know, they, they pressure you. They don't let you get any very good opportunities. And then even on the offensive side too, Clarkson had a couple good chances on Reagan Kirk. They didn't capitalize on any of them, but maybe a little bit of a blueprint for what Wisconsin's coming into on Sunday. This is, this is kind of what we've seen from Clarkson all year. And, and I said this last weekend or last time we were on Clarkson, not a very complete team. They don't really have that mm. score that could help them, you know, propel themselves over Ohio state. Ohio state has a bunch and it was pretty evident in this game. Ohio state came in with McKenna Webster. They came in with Hannah Bilka and they came in with Barnes and, and, and it just really wasn't a good matchup for Clarkson to come into the only thing that they really had going for them was their defense and their defense while they played well they could only hold Ohio State for so long and as you put it Kedrick the dam at some point has to break <laughs> and it did break in the last few minutes of that third period that was that was my impression watching the game as I was talking to Noah about it was just felt like eventually the dam has to break or Clarkson's going to come away with a sneaky, sneaky, fluky win. Uh, because in the first period, Clarkson outshot Ohio State 24 to 5. Or sorry, Ohio State outshot Clarkson 24 to 5. That's still and insane. <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers. Still and it just felt like the entire period was being played in Clarkson's defensive zone. And by about the 10 minute mark, Clarkson looked gassed and needed to get to the intermission with, with about nine and a half minutes to go. Um, 
I had a little bit of a different impression of the Clarkson defense, which wasn't so much that they really interrupted chances to get play set up. But you look at that first period in particular, Ohio State holding the puck in Clarkson's defensive zone for most of that period. But every loose puck got cleared out by the Clarkson defense immediately. If there was a rebound, it was gone. It was shot into a corner right away. Just excellent, excellent awareness by those Clarkson defenders to keep that close. And when Ohio State tied it with about six minutes to go in in the first, they had a chance to go up 2-1 and really put this one away early that missed a like wide open wraparound as Clarkson collapsed in, in the net and, and got it, got it out of the crease. But it felt then that Clarkson needed that intermission a lot more than Ohio state. If this game were played with 25 minute periods instead of 20 minute periods, Ohio state may have won this one like nine one uh, the Clarkson outshot Ohio state very early on in the second period for a while. But by the time it was done, so much of the period was played in Clarkson's end at the tail end that shots were basically even at, at the end of the second. And then the third period, you get to the final 20 minutes. Clarkson just couldn't, couldn't keep up with, with the skating advantage that Ohio state had. We talked so much on our preview episode of the frozen four about dominating the pace, determining the pace of play in that game was going to be the key. And Ohio State definitely determined the pace of play in, in that game against Clarkson uh, because the Golden Knights just did not have the skates to keep up with the Buckeyes the, the entire 60 minutes. Any any final lasting impressions of the two national semifinals before we get to a, a quick preview of the national title game? You know, Clarkson, both ECAC teams put up quite a fight. You know, Colgate mm-hmm. and Clarkson both put up quite a fight. Um, the East coast is getting better. The East coast, you know, I think this year significantly got better and it made it a lot harder for, you know, teams like, you know, teams like Wisconsin, teams like Ohio state to expect to come into these games and blow the doors off people. I mean, Clarkson was hanging, you know, Clarkson was up one, nothing, you know, for most of that first period against Ohio state. And then, you know, you look at it, Wisconsin twice against St. Lawrence and against Colgate, It took them all the way to the third period to finally put both of those teams away to close the door. I think, you know, next year, the ECAC, you know, man, it's very sneaky. It's a very sneaky conference. The Badgers don't play really too many good ECAC teams at the beginning of the season, even in the middle point of the season. Ohio State has. They played Colgate and they lost. Don't be surprised next year if we see two ECAC teams make it to the Frozen Four and potentially make it to the national championship. That was my takeaway from this semifinal was, holy cow, these East Coast teams are incredible and really pesky against the WCHA powerhouses. Yeah, uh, it's a budding Midwest versus East rivalry that, the men's game has had for a long time and it's good. It's good for that to come to the, to the women's game. Um, let's, let's talk Badgers Buckeyes round six fight. Who wins? Who? Well, I, it's going to be fun to watch and I'll just give a little, get a little preview of it. I mean, like the Ohio state Buckeyes in Wisconsin six time they've met this year, but, or this is the sixth time they're meeting this year. Wisconsin has won the last two. Ohio State won the first three. The big thing, though, for Wisconsin, I think their confidence against the Buckeyes when they've came into their last two games been really good. They've been really able to match the pace of Ohio State. Ohio State defensively has been able to match what Wisconsin's throwing at them. The big thing, though, it's going to come down to who wins the game on the defensive side and in special teams. We said it earlier this year, Ohio State struggles with special teams. They're not all, I mean, they're they're good. They're good, but they're not all worldly. Mm-hmm. And Wisconsin, one of the top power plays in the country. Again, it's going to come down to who, who wins on the defensive side and, and comes down to the power play. But, Kedrick, if I have to choose, got to go with the Badgers on this one. I, it, the confidence, I was saying at the beginning of this, you know, before we were hopping on after the game against Colgate, 
was nervous because the confidence yeah. level of was, you know, I was feeling pretty high about the confidence level and then they played Colgate and then the confidence was kind of shot. Yeah. So, I was about to say you, you told me yesterday that you watched that game and, and thought that Wisconsin didn't have a chance against this Buckeyes team. What, what yeah. is, what has changed in the last, you know, 20, 20 hours to get you to this point where you're picking Wisconsin? Oh man. A couple things, obviously how Kirsten Sims got robbed of the Patty Kazmer <laughs> war. That makes any player, any team really mad, but then Nadine Moserall's comments that she made in her press conference about the Badgers, basically just oh, saying, yeah. you know, so she commented. So, so the comment, you know, was made, you know, they were talking about Wisconsin and the national title game and she commented, and these were her words tomorrow. will two be heavyweights. There's no love lost between the two. They obviously Wisconsin have a mm -hmm. legacy, but she said, we are the new hot. We are like the new hot new nightclub right now in town. <laughs> so adds a little bit of fuel to the fire for the Badgers. That and is, that is some Ohio state ostentatious flair. If I have ever heard it. Yeah. And keep in mind too, last year, Ohio state danced, on Le bon, on the center ice of Le bon last year, mm. and that did not end very well for the Buckeyes. So, I think Wisconsin's going to come out pretty pretty ticked off for this game, and I got the Badgers winning this one. After all of that, <laughs> <laughs> um, th this game is going to be played uh, at 3 p.m. Central tomorrow, Sunday, March 24th. The national title game. It will be aired on cable on uh, ESPN U. Uh, so you can catch that Noah Clark of iHeartRadio and 1070 the game. Madison joining us uh, to preview Wisconsin trying to win its eighth national title in a rematch of last year's national title game with the Ohio State Buckeyes. I too think that Wisconsin is going to take care of business here. I can't believe I have reached this point where I actually <laughs> expect them to win because <laughs> All season long last year, never would have expected them to win the title. All over the last, what, five weeks, however long we've been doing this, I've been saying, I don't know that anybody can beat Ohio State. I started to believe when when, when they did it, when they got the one in Lebanon, really put me, put me there on the edge of my seat when they got the big final faceoff blowout win to win the conference title game. I saw what Wisconsin did to just choke the life out of St. Lawrence in the regional final. Now, after watching with that Wisconsin Badgers, Mark Johnson defense, Caroline Harvey, Vivian Jungles, Shayla Edwards defense did against the Colgate Red Raiders. I'm in. The, the Colgate is one of the best analogs Wisconsin could have had to play Ohio State just two days prior to this national title game. It is Ohio State and Wisconsin have bounced back and forth between the number one and two offenses all, all year. Colgate has consistently been number three. Wisconsin has the country's third best power play. Colgate is two. Minnesota is one. Wisconsin just snuffed the, the lights out from behind Colgate's eyes on the power play, killing all four Colgate power play opportunities in the national semifinal, including that full two minute five on three. My concern has always been defense with this team. I think they got it. And I think they got the goaltender. I think they got the goaltender. Uh, Reagan Kirk is awesome. And I can't believe I'm going to say it, but you really are going to say this in Ava McNaughton, Reagan Kirk matchup is awesome. These are two amazing goalies who I think right now are, are playing on the same tier. She, she is not going to get a, a three straight shutout performance, but my goodness, if Ava McNaughton does post a shutout on, on Sunday, I think you have to give her the, the mop. Um, I'm not predicting that's going to happen. I think Ohio state's going to find the back of the net, but Wisconsin was able to generate scoring chances against a Colgate team that, while it doesn't have the greatest defense, has enough. And Wisconsin has the high-level scorers, and now I think that they have the defense 
that that is able to shut down an offense like Ohio State's. They shut down Ohio State's offense the last two times they have played. They shut down a comparable offense in Colgate this one other game. This team should be riding with a lot of confidence right now. And, and look, I, I think it's going to be an awesome hockey game. But yeah, if I'm picking anybody right now, I, I can't call call me a homer. I, I am one. <laughs> give, give me the Badgers. I, I think I think they get it done. Any any final pressing thoughts on, on the national title game? It, it, it I feel like, you know, both of these games, Wisconsin is coming in expecting knowing what they're going to get from Ohio State. So mm. any thoughts of them like having the nerves, I think, are completely gone. I mean, mm-hmm. completely gone. The, the, the nerves, I think, were there when they played Colgate. The nerves are completely gone when they play Ohio State, and especially with with Coach Muzzerall and just adding a little flair to that. I mean, it 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 has to make you a little bit mad that Ohio that Ohio State is throwing these comments. And I say it once again for the Badgers: the key to this game, defense, but also special teams, special teams, special teams. Ohio State not all worldly in the penalty kill department. Nope. They are 19th, 19th in penalty kill this year. Wisconsin in the power play, they are one of the top power play units in the country. They are fourth in the country in power plays. The two teams, the three teams that they have beat, St. Lawrence, oh, number yeah. three, Colgate, number two, and Minnesota, number one. At this point, Wisconsin has beat all three of them. They have the best power play in the country right now, or the best remaining power play in the country. Mm-hmm. And I think if they get a chance on the power play against Ohio State, they have to capitalize. And all bets are off at this point. That is going to be one of the big contributing factors to what Wisconsin could do to win this game. Agreed. And there might be there might be some extra edge. Because Wisconsin has three first-team All-Americans. Three first-team All-Americans. The first time the Badgers have had three first-team All-Americans since 2007. Caroline Harvey, first-team All-American. Casey O'Brien and Kirsten Sims, first-team All-Americans. Two of your top three finalists for the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award given to the top player in women's Division I ice hockey. Casey O'Brien, the country's second leading scorer. Kirsten Sims, the country's number one overall leading scorer, leads the country in points, leads the country in goals. The only player she trails in assists is Casey O'Brien, who just set the single-season program record on Friday night for assists, tallying her 50th on the Badgers game winner. Neither one won the Patty Kassmeyer Award. In a shocking shocking upset Izzy Daniel who is a great player is a great player this is nothing against Izzy Daniel she had a fantastic season she's the first Cornell player to win the Patty Kazmaier award and that's awesome for her she she won the Ivy League player of the year she won the ECAC player of the year now she won the national player of the year award I have no idea how she won the national player of the year award do you do you know? Do you know? I have any idea how Izzy Daniel won the National Player of the Year award over Kirsten Sims, who has seventy-five points on the season, over Casey O'Brien, who has seventy-three points on the season. I. It just drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. I've said this for weeks. Do the right thing. You did the wrong thing. I tweeted this out earlier. Shame on the people who voted for Izzy Daniel to win it. No disrespect, to Izzy Daniel. She's a great player, but Cornell. Not in the Frozen Four. Cornell, also, too, not a really, you know, top team in the country. Izzy Daniel had a phenomenal year. But, come on. Like, Kirsten Sims had 75 points this year. She was second in the country in assists. She led the country in goals, you know, by far. She was tied with Abby Murphy for goals. But it it's mm-hmm. it is in it, – it drives me insane – that we're sitting here now talking about this when we should be talking about how Wisconsin just ended a seven year drought with Kirsten mm. Sims winning the Patty Cass. And now here we are sitting here saying the drought continues. Like, what are we doing? Like, I don't understand. I just don't understand it. I don't understand why people would take 
Casey O'Brien. And some people, and someone tweeted this out. And Kedrick, you can you can yeah. test me on this. Someone tweeted this out saying strength of schedule wasn't as good for Wisconsin. Strength of schedule wasn't as good for Wisconsin. They were in the WCHA, one of the top conferences in all of college hockey. Their competition is pretty tough. And then especially down the stretch of the year too, did you see the gauntlet that they faced in February? Did 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 anybody not witness the gauntlet they faced in February? They played St. Cloud State, really good team, had one of the best goalie tandems. They played Minnesota, had one of the top goal scorers in the country in Abby Murphy, swept them. They played Ohio State, number one team in the country, and won one of those games. And not only that, they beat them twice. And Kirsten Sims, very key contributor in all three of those. Mm-hmm. But we're going to give it to Izzy Daniel. I can't believe that I can't believe that people who vote for this think that a person who scored 75 goals should not or 75 points, excuse me, should get this award over, you know, someone who's not even in the top five in scoring. Not in the top five in scoring. I believe Izzy is third in the country in points per game. In points per game, but I'm looking like she's sixth in scoring. Like in terms of points, she's 59. Right. So so yeah. this is this is the ultimate argument, right? Is like what are we doing? Kirsten Sims, 33 goals, 42 assists, 75 points. O'Brien, 23 goals, 50 assists, 73 points. Izzy Daniel, 21 goals, 38 assists for a total of 59 points, 24 points fewer than Casey O'Brien. And there's obviously some postseason play that that is like taken into account here to, to inflate these numbers. But like going into last night, Kirsten Sims said a full two points per game. It, it's incredible what she's done this season. And, and the the poster you're referring to is at uh, title, title nine hockey nine the Roman numeral I and then the letter X hockey on the website, formerly known as Twitter. And they, they like are, are a good account for like good women's hockey analysis. Um, except for this case, except for this case of where they argued that. And if you look, they are somewhat of a WCHA hater for some reason. I don't understand why, uh, but, but this is making me East coast, but it, their, their location says they're in Washington. So I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Um, this is definitely making me buy into the West, uh, the West versus East hockey rivalry right now, though. The, the take from at Title Nine Hockey on the website, formerly known as Twitter, was that the committee got it right by picking Izzy Daniel to, to win the Patty Kazmaier Award. And the point was, I know Wisconsin fans are bummed, but the Badgers had five forwards in the top eight in scoring. Daniel is 25 points north of her next teammate. Cornell played Penn State, Syracuse, Mercyhurst, St. Thomas, and Minnesota. Not a great non-conference slate, but better than Lindenwood, Merrimack, and Boston College, uh, which were, you know, teams that Wisconsin played in the non-con. To this, I say, is this a is this a best Cornell Player of the Year award? Like most outstanding Ivy League Player of the Year award? No, we already had that. This is a the best national player of the year award. The fact that Wisconsin has five forwards in the top eight in scoring, and still Kirsten Sims has been able to post 75 points of her own is a miraculous number. We have talked about the fact that if they win the national title, this will go down as one of the best individual effort seasons for any player in this program's history. I don't get the point here. The the one argument that I, I, I think I could see making sense on this point, though, that Wisconsin didn't have the greatest non-conference strength of schedule. So you don't want to give it to Kirsten Sims. Give the award to Casey O'Brien. And, and that's what Nicole Haas, who who does a, an awesome job covering not just Wisconsin hockey, but uh, like the, the entire sport as a whole uh, for USCHO and other other sites. She's a freelance journalist. Her ballot was Casey O'Brien, one, Izzy Daniel, two, Kirsten Sims, three. And part of this, I get giving it to Casey O'Brien because she has recorded 47 points since the beginning of this calendar year, which means that a huge line share of her points have actually come in WCHA play. So if you want to say, if you, if you want to knock on 
the non-conference opponents that Kirsten Sims has tallied up a, a good handful of points against give the award to Casey O'Brien then who is doing this on the biggest stage in the sport, who is doing this against the, the country's top programs. I simply do not get this except for you have vote splitting. I, I think the only way this would have happened is too many number one and number two ballots were split. No, number one ballots were split between writers and, and folks on the selection committee from the West who put either Casey O'Brien or Kirsten Sims one, and then thinking they needed to put an East coast skater at number two in Izzy Daniel. So you put the other one at three. It, it, it's the only way I can imagine it is, is vote splitting. Well, a United East East coast, uh, all, all wrote in Izzy Daniel at, at number one. I, I am shocked, shocked that what should have been a coronation for Kirsten Sims did not end that way. Yeah, I, I, I just I just can't believe that we're really sitting here saying that, you know, Kirsten that Sims. That Wisconsin still hasn't won a Patty Kaz. Yes, they haven't won a Patty Kaz. 17? It's just and then what's even crazier is I forgot to is Casey <gasps> O'Brien. One thing I think that is true. I do think if, if Kirsten Sims didn't win it, Casey didn't win it. Casey O'Brien should have won it yes. because Casey O'Brien broke the record last night for assists in Wisconsin yep. history with 50. Yep. Daryl Watts was the last player to do that with 49. Yep. And then before that, there wasn't another player who reached that 49 mark in, in like a decade. Exactly. Uh, so like Casey should have by far, if it wasn't Kirsten Sims, it should have at least been Casey O'Brien. I mean, this yeah. is just, all around just buffoonery. That I we believe the top three finish was Izzy followed by Casey followed by Kirsten. I wonder if some of this too was like, Hey, we have two seniors here. Let's give it to an upperclassman. Uh, some of this like hokey Heisman votary kind of stuff that I don't get. And it's not that the committee is afraid of giving it to a freshman. Heck Daryl Watts, when she was at Boston college, won the award as a freshman. Mm -hmm. Like I, I do not understand how we got to this point. The only thing I can hope for is that that team comes out ticked the heck off on Sunday uh, and says, you don't, you don't think we have the best players in the country. You, you don't think that's us. Oh, that's, that's us. And we're going to hang, we're going to hang another five, six, seven on Ohio state. Unreal. That's, that's my only hope at this point. Uh, and, and, these players, a high level athletes thrive off of grievance, whether it's real or contrived. Uh, but this is real. I don't, I guess I don't know that that's in Mark Johnson's, you know, repertoire to, to, to motivate that way. Um, obviously I'm not in the locker room all the time, but for him, most of the time it's just, I'm calm, steady, collected. I wonder, I wonder if he wants to use it or if he knows it's already in the back of their head and he doesn't even need to. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the way ah. Mark's personality is and the way that he coaches, I feel like he's just going to let the players play speak yeah. for itself at, at this point. I mean, it, 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 I mean, Ohio state's head coach already has thrown fuel to the fire. Mark doesn't need to throw yeah, any more in. Right. They already know that there's fuel already added to the fires, so they're going to come out already playing pretty ticked off. Uh, all right, Noah. Any any final thoughts as we go into the last Division One women's hockey game of the season? Noah, I cannot thank you enough for doing this with us uh, over the last handful of weeks. It has been awesome get, getting to talk with you. Not not just on this podcast, but we've been talking a lot lately outside of it as well. Um, a real treat and we'll talk at least one more time, but before we wrap up for, for this season and any burning thoughts before we head to the national title game that Wisconsin will play in on Sunday. Big thing. I will say a couple, just two things. One Wisconsin 24 in one when scoring first this year, mm -hmm. they got it up to, you know, they got it last night when they scored first, and that was history. Wisconsin, 24 and one this year. The only team that they did not win against when they scored first, 
Ohio State at Laban Ice Arena. That was the last time. So since then, though, Wisconsin's beat Ohio State the last two times. So keep that in mind. If Wisconsin scores, their chances of winning are pretty high. Another thing, Ritter Curl, this is her final game on the Badger W. And what better, what what a better way to go out in your career than playing the Ohio State Buckeyes in the national championship. And what's even crazier, I think I saw a stat, a headline out there. If Britta Curl wins this national championship, she will be the only player in women's hockey to win four national championships. No player can say that in college hockey. I'm really rooting for Britta Curl to get this win tomorrow and really hoping that she can go out with a bang. She has never lost a postseason game in her entire career. And she's, you know, she's on a, an NCAA pace. tournament game. Yes. She's never sorry, lost an NCAA correct. tournament game. Sorry. An NCAA tournament game. And she's on pace to potentially win a fourth national championship. No player can say that. She might be one of the greatest Badgers in this program's history when it's all said and done tomorrow. Yep. Uh, the, the two year running Badger captain has a chance to go out on top of the world. Uh, Noah Clark of iHeartRadio and 1070 of the game in Madison. Thanks as always for joining and, and, and on Wisconsin. Yes, on Wisconsin. Let's go. Let's go win an eighth championship. Thanks as always to friend of the show, Noah Clark, for his time on a Saturday, no less. On a Saturday, Noah, Noah Clark giving us his time. Uh, Wisconsin will play the Ohio State Buckeyes in the national championship game tomorrow. That's Sunday, March 24th at 3 p.m. Central in Durham, New Hampshire. That game will be aired on ESPNU. Uh, You can watch it if you want even more Wisconsin hockey content if you are trying to catch up on the team. Uh, We have a ton of articles written over at Badger Notes right now previewing the Frozen Four, the opponents, uh, everything you need to know about that team. Also, some Wisconsin basketball content over there wrapping up the season. I have a ton of new stuff over there linked in the podcast description. Stay tuned. We're, we're going to get into Wisconsin basketball, losing to James Madison in the first round and what it means for, for the direction of the program going forward. Uh, because this is not the last bombshell uh, piece of news to drop. I, I can guarantee you that this is going to be an eventful off season for Wisconsin basketball. So stay tuned to the feed and, and keep enjoying your, your day with a six pack. The Scotty six pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. While you're here, leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments. Really, really, really does help the show here in March, in March Madness. You can also watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Subscribe there, there, like the show, and we will talk to you all again very soon on Wisconsin.